from RBC, uh, Caitlin Bowie and Anna Sapellis. And uh, it just, they're gonna do a, a two person approach here. So Caitlin has been a wholesaler in the insurance industry for 11 years, nine of which have been spent as a living benefit specialist with RBC. Caitlin is driven each day to share her passion with her advisors. Uh, in her personal time, Caitlin and her family, which includes a brand new baby, 18-month-old uh, Claire, enjoy uh, spending ample uh, quality time outdoors. And also joining Caitlin this afternoon is uh, Anna Sapellis. Anna uh, joined RBC Insurance last year, specializing in the permanent life insurance space. Uh, she also deals with the universal life and term to 100. Anna has been in the industry for over 15 years and holds an honors BA from the University of Toronto. She also has her CLU and CHS designations. She is a perpetual student of the insurance industry and continually adds value to advisors and clients alike. Ladies, take it away. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you. It is so unbelievably wonderful to be here. Um, as Greg mentioned, I have been wholesaling um, living benefits for nine years. Eight of those wonderful years have been spent working with IDC World Source, um, an account very near and dear to my heart. And the last 18 months have actually uh, been spent on a medical leave. So I am back now. Not only is this my first time addressing IDC win in over a year, but my first time presenting in over a year. So I'm just so excited, so thrilled to be here and uh, and hopefully we can uh, have a lot of fun and cook up some great ideas today. So for our discussion today, uh, Anna and I are going to discuss planning for professionals. And I think most of the advisors on the call would agree with me when I say that the professional market represents a highly attractive, highly advantageous market for our advisors to break into. But unfortunately, I mean, COVID has brought around so many changes for so many different industries and professionals have been uniquely affected as well. So what we want to do today is guide the advisors on the call through new concepts, new conversations, new approaches to planning for professionals in this new COVID-19 environment. Um, before I do get into it, I must uh, discuss a few important updates. And uh, I mean, of course, non-face-to-face -face and tech updates are at the forefront right now. So really just want a, a reminder, send a reminder to all of our advisors on the line that RBC has updated our disability online application. It is very slick user-friendly process, including new e-policy delivery receipts, as well as settlement documents and policy slips that are now sent directly to our clients in our new online insurance portal. More than we can cover off today, but if you're not aware of these changes, please reach out to your RBC wholesaler and, and get some training on the new um, e-policy delivery and e-app platform. Very, very important as we uh, proceed together. Um, RBC has also launched, rolled out a new established professionals program for our target market disability insurance clients, where we've deepened our discount for these clients from 5% previously to 20%. Very significant savings that'll allow you to have those conversations and get in front of your clients with some premium savings, which can hopefully help you open some doors as well. Again, your wholesale team can uh, walk you through those opportunities and I believe the blasts were sent out through IDC as well. So check your inboxes too. And then last but not least, our estate and wealth versions of our participating whole life solution are now available for new business and conversion. So exciting. I know we've been waiting quite some time and Anna's gonna speak. For my portion of the presentation, we're gonna focus on disability insurance specifically and how we can position disability insurance for professionals in this new environment, as I mentioned. But the fact remains, and it's a fact I've harped on for many, many years now, that still only 8 to 10% of all licensed advisors in Canada sell a disability policy each year. So it's still a very underserved market. And so we can't jump into the, you know, the what, the how without first addressing the why, because with numbers like that, there is a gap there and we have to talk about that gap. So what I wanted to do today, usually we can tackle the why with, you know, statistics, you know, we talk about disability being three times more likely uh, to occur in a given year than death, for example. 
Um, but for me, based on what I've gone through recently, it's not about the statistics, it's about storytelling. And so I wanted to share with you my story and open up today's dialogue with a little bit of what I've learned over the last 18 months. So why is disability insurance important? If you look at the left-hand side of the screen, you can see a happily married couple about to welcome their first child. Um, the woman there is a very healthy vegan who exercises three times a week, has never had a health concern in her life and has no family history whatsoever of any type of cancer, definitely not breast cancer. If we fast forward to December, 2020, there's that same unsuspecting woman on the right now who is four months post chemotherapy. So her hair is starting to grow in a little bit, um, holding her daughter who is now born and had no idea that just four to five months ago, she was about to be hit with an absolutely life-changing diagnosis. So in case you haven't gotten it yet, that is myself. That is what I went through. I was diagnosed with cancer while eight months pregnant. And I very quickly went from a passionate living benefit sales consultant who has been wholesaling this product passionately for nine years to a claimant, somebody who immediately needed to call my insurance carriers and get those claims payments um, in my bank account ASAP. And having proper protection was so important for myself because it meant that of all the concerns my husband and I faced over the last 18 months, money was never one of them. It meant my husband was able to take an entire year off of work to look after our infant child while I was also off work. I mean, what client has the privilege of saying that they were sick and then both parents were able to not work for an entire 18 month period? That was only made possible because I had disability insurance. I had two critical illness insurance policies. Had I not, I don't know how we would have managed because taking care of a brand newborn baby while struggling for your life yourself when you're too sick to even lift a glass of water to your, your lips is very difficult. We definitely needed that. So the disability insurance was, was of utmost importance. And I, I learned a few things in my time as a claimant as well, things that I didn't really realize when I was a wholesaler. And so I wanted to also share with everybody sort of what my top three lessons were as I went through this process, because I think these can translate into important advice that we should give our clients. So number one lesson is disability and critical illness insurance are equally as important. Uh, there is so much conversation around, should I have DI, should I have CI? I, I truly believe now in understanding clients do have limited premium dollars, but striking a balance, clients need both. Disability and critical illness insur insurance are both equally as important. My second huge lesson was disability can strike when you least expect it. I mean, I can't imagine a more unsuspecting time than being eight months pregnant. And I've heard a lot of clients give me the objection over the years, you know, I don't have any family history, I'm really healthy, so you know what, I'm just going to put it off for now. Locking in that insurability is so important because it doesn't matter how many marathons you run or how healthy you are, it can truly happen at any time and it's so important to have that proper protection. And then last but not least, I really learned a lot about the disability claims process. I learned that disability claims are complex. They are full of, you know, nuances that you don't see on the critical illness or the life insurance side where it's one specific diagnosis with one covered condition. And that nuance is really what I wanna focus on with today's presentation. So I'm gonna move into the content today um, at this time. So as I've mentioned, disability comes in all different shapes and sizes. It's not tied to a specific contingency like a critical illness or death or whatever the case may be. It's anything that prevents you from working that you're under the care of a doctor for. So it can be anything from mental health to injuries to things that we haven't even become familiar with as advisors because we're not doctors. And so what we need is a disability insurance policy that is just as comprehensive as the claims experience. And so the slide here says, are all disability insurance policies created equal? 
The answer is absolutely not. And this is an important nuance that we as advisors need to be innately aware of. Disability insurance is a contract sport. It is so different. I would argue there's not a product in the industry that differs more from product to product than disability insurance. And it's important for us to be innately aware of this because our clients are innately aware of this thanks to personal injury lawyers, right? You hear those ads all the time. If your long-term disability insurance provider is denied your claim, call XYZ lawyer. I'll cut them some slack and not name them personally. Uh, but we need as advisors to have the confidence and the skill set in our toolbox to say to our clients, no, what is being held up in some of these personal injury cases or what is being battled on in court is not the product I'm offering you today. It is not the product that we are offering to professionals. The product that we are offering to professionals is a non-cancelable product. And there are specific advantages in this marketplace, especially in the COVID-19 environment that make this absolutely the mo most robust product that you can offer your clients with those safety assurances and guarantees built in. So that brings us to our industry flagship, what we're gonna speak about today. Um, if I can give RBC just a little bit of a shameless plug here, um, we do have 52% of the non-cancelable marketplace locked tight. So truly when I speak to the value of the contract we're gonna to discuss today, it is a contract that has been proven for over 120 years at time of claim with a robust amount of experience. I would say there are probably two other products in the industry that could rival the RBC professional series, but certainly I wouldn't say there's an outright winner in terms of a contract that can beat RBC. This is the flagship. If you want to sell your client the absolute best product in the industry, this is where you will find it. Like I said, there are some ties out there in certain spaces, but this certainly cannot be beaten outright. So the professional series itself, when we're talking about a target market, we're really talking about fee for service or high income earners. So fee for service can be anything from lawyers who bill by the hour to doctors who bill by the patients and of course higher income earners. So we're talking folks who make, you know, I would say 80 to 100,000 in income and above. That's where we're looking at a, a clear target market for the RBC professional series. Now, what makes the professional series the strongest product available in this particular space is all wrapped up in the nature of non-cancelable, uh, the fact that it's a non-cancelable contract. So when it comes to disability insurance, there are three different types of contracts typically available in the market. There's guaranteed renewable, there's cancelable, there's non-cancelable. And these contracts typically differ in three main ways that provide your clients significant differences at time of claim. So the first is exclusions and limitations. A non-CAN contract typically only has three built-in exclusions and limitations, act of war, um, normal pregnancy, or a period of incarceration. Whereas guaranteed renewable and cancelable contracts can have anywhere from 14 to 20 exclusions and limitations built in. And for those of you taking notes, if you want to write this down, the number one reason why claims are denied at RBC insurance is the client is trying to claim on something that is expressly excluded in the contract. And when I say that, by the way, RBC, yeah, we do have a 85% uh, claims payment rate. So we pay 85% of our claims. But in that 15%, the number one reason claims are denied is because the client is trying to claim on something that's expressly excluded in the contract. So clearly going with a contract with less exclusions and limitations is of utmost importance because it's the number one hangup client see when they're actually having a claimable event. The second would be integration with benefits, integration of benefits at time of claim. So a non-cancelable policy is the only type of insurance contract out of these three that will provide your clients with a benefit up front and that benefit is guaranteed at time of claim, regardless of other sources of income. So if your client qualifies financially for $10,000 of monthly benefit, that is the commitment we make at time of underwriting and the promise we keep at time of claim. That is the exact amount of benefit they will receive at time of claim. 
with other contracts in the industry, you have to be careful because they may be reduced based on whether the client receives, you know, residual earnings from a severance package or um, income from a corporation that they may be a shareholder in, or even benefits from, say, a, a no-haul auto claim or something of that nature. It's so important for a client in the professional space to make sure that at time of claim, they're going to get exactly what they've been paying for all along. So what I thought I would do is run through a couple really quick examples of how this can uh, show up when you're actually in front of a client, because I'm, I'm sure as advisors, we're not going to be providing definitions of non-cancelable to our clients. We want to speak with real examples. So I've prepared two quick examples just to walk us through how these non-can contracts differ and why they're so much more robust when you're um, practically applying them. So the first, let's look at Karen. We'll assume Karen is a real estate agent and has earned, say, $150,000 in income in 2021. Um, now, I chose real estate because let's assume that the real estate market cools off a little bit. Uh, whether you want that to happen or not. Let's assume the real estate market cools off a little bit. We can all probably agree real estate agents have done very well in the last couple of years. So assuming the market cools and Karen's sales slow down and she claims say five years from now and five years from now her pre-disability earnings have fallen to $50,000. What would her benefit be if she was underwritten in 2021? Well, her benefit would be if she had worked with a wise advisor, like all the advisors on this call, and she had been offered an RBC professional series policy, then her benefit would be based on that $150,000 of income at time of application, not that $50,000 of income that it had slid to at time of claim. So hopefully your wheels are turning and everybody is thinking about clients that you have who are coming off solid years, solid income earning years. Now is a fantastic time to lock in on a non-cancelable contract for a client whose income future may not be as certain. Perhaps it won't fall so drastically, but it may not be as stable. Clients who are in that professional space, fee for service, locking in at that higher income is always a, uh, an advantageous way to approach that. Okay, let's move on to another scenario. This one's even a little bit more uh, blatant. Let's assume we have Jenna, who is a 55-year-old female lawyer. Um, a wise advisor had sold her a $10,000 RBC policy a few years ago. Now at age 55, she's got pandemic fatigue. She's got the kids at home with virtual learning. And she just says, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm going to retire now. I'm not going to ride out the next 10 years. I'm going to retire now. So she stops working. Jenna's not working, not one hour a week. If she were to claim on her disability insurance policy, how much would she receive? Jenna would actually receive the full $10,000 of monthly benefit, even though she's not working. So if that doesn't communicate the value of underwriting up front, I don't know what does. Jenna has the ability to claim on this policy regardless of her earnings at time of claim, regardless of her working hours at time of claim, all the way up to age six. So that really communicates the value of a non-cancelable contract versus guaranteed renewable or cancelable just in a really high level terms. It's that ability to lock into those guarantees up front without sliding into any claim time underwriting issues down the road. Now, the second sort of key highlight I want to make in the professional space is being aware of your client's definition and the importance of having an appropriate definition of disability. Uh, when it comes to disability, there are three main definitions. You know, any occupation, I've put kind of a big blue X beside. That is not one we want to really offer in the professional space. Any occupation says any job that you're reasonably suited towards by education, training, or experience. If you can do that job, you're not on claim. So if I were claiming, if they could have found me any other job to return to and said, you're not considered disabled just because you can't be a wholesaler. If you can't answer phones at the call center, you've got to go back to work. So in the professional spirit series space, when you're working with professionals, you really want to make sure they have that regular occupation definition that covers them in their own job all the way to age 65. And then for your specialized professional clients, you want to even go one step further and give them that own occupation definition of disability, which says, even if you return to work in the event of disability, but in another occupation, 
you can still claim. So I'll wrap it up with one more quick example. And what I'll do is I'll use the total definition of disability own occupation. So I know that's sometimes a difficult one for, for clients and advisors to grasp. So let's assume that we had a lawyer and his name was Eric and Eric was a litigator. Litigators have to be talking in court. They have to be not shy, definitely not have any issues with stage fright. Let's say Eric develops a phobia of speaking in large crowds and he can no longer be a litigator. If he has a disability policy with own occupation and he returns to work doing um, say regular consulting for RBC claims, for example, we would still pay his full benefit because that own OC rider says, even though you've returned to work in another capacity, you're still considered disabled because you cannot be a litigator. So I'm gonna use this example to bleed into my last um, sort of top up opportunity case study. Now, the, one of the biggest objections still to this day that I receive from a lot of advisors is that disability insurance isn't a fit because their clients have group benefits already. And I know I hear this all the time. Um, so I just want to show you very quickly what it would look like if Eric, this litigator, had relied only on his disability benefits provided through work. So Eric's got an income of $240,000. He has a group disability benefit of, say, $5,000 monthly. In the event that he became disabled, that $5,000 represents roughly 40% of his total income. So now Eric is taking a 60% drop in earnings in the event of a disability. I know that that's not tolerable to any advisors on the call. Certainly to myself, I could not have uh, afforded a 60% drop in earnings over the past 18 months with what I went through. So the opportunity for advisors in this space is very simply to provide a top up. Um, based on Eric's income, he would be eligible for 9,700 total. So we would simply do a top up of $4,700 on top of the 5,000. And that way we bring Eric up from 40% income replacement to where he should be. Anywhere between 75 and 85% is typically the magic number that we wanna see our clients arrive at. So I know we've discussed uh, a number or uh, just a very few high level concepts today and used a few examples to really drive home some of the conversations we can be having with professionals with regard to disability insurance in this COVID-19 environment. There's way more that we cannot possibly tackle today because uh, we're limited with time, but I would encourage you to please reach out to your RBC wholesaler. Um, we can support you with pre-approach letters if you're prospecting clients like Eric, like Jenna, like Karen, um, and they're tailored to a number of unique situations. Though we couldn't cover off all the fastballs today, uh, they're listed on the screen there. So I would encourage you to please review this PowerPoint afterwards and any questions you can reach out to your wholesale team. Uh, with that, I'm gonna pass it over to the wonderful Anna Sapellis. She's gonna show us how we can not only rely on living benefits, but the RBC Life Suite in order to help clients like Eric um, make sure that they're fully covered and properly protected against all contingencies in the events of not just disability, but of course, death as well. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Anna. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Caitlin. One thing we really pride ourselves on here at RBC is that we're this one-stop solution for your client's insurance needs. We're known for that com those competitive term rates, the strong disability contracts, our Wealth Solutions shelf, and now participating Whole Life as well. Uh, we purposely built in the ability to customize and convert many of these products to protect each chapter of your client's changing needs. Now, today, what I want to focus on are the options available once a term insurance policy is in place with us and what options we have available for a client's family, particularly in protecting that next generation. So I'm going to use the same case study as uh, Caitlin mentioned last, and it's about Eric. So Eric is not just a lawyer. He is also a family man, and he has that need for life insurance. Now we're going to focus on the term side and you might be asking me why are we only focusing on term for a professional like Eric? You know, he's savvy, he would love to see insurance his insurance coverage grow as his assets do. He has that interest in diversifying his investment portfolio. He's a savvy investor there. 
Also, he has the income to support a permanent life solution. So why only term now? And this is because we wanna take a long-term approach with clients like Eric, with all of them, and focusing on that lifelong relationship and not just the transaction. Eric makes a great income he needs to protect. He has that young family, a mortgage, so many dreams that he has ahead of him. And I know we would love to put all those puzzle pieces all together for him right away, get that complete insurance portfolio going. But that might be neglecting that what Eric needs today could look very different from what Eric needs tomorrow. And what he needs most at this junction in his life is flexibility. So through our needs analysis, we determined that Eric has a life need of $1.5 million where we'll put in place term for now. It's because Eric really wants to get that disability planning squared away as we talked about earlier. He has his young daughter, Maggie. He wants to explore some options for her as well. He would also like to bring in his wife for a more robust estate planning conversation, but he's just not ready for all of that right now. So we've put in the term insurance in place to protect him for the time being, knowing that as prudent advisors, we will be visiting our clients every year. We'll be revisiting his insurance plan, and we've already booked our next year's insurance planning conversation with him. By using RBC Your Term, we've now established protection for today, while also leaving room for lots of flexibility for down the road. Sorry there, everyone, some technical difficulties. Bear with me. We may have skipped ahead. Sorry, everybody. I'm uh, struggling a little bit here with the slides. Anna, would you like me to control them? If possible, thank you. If we could go back to one. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Right here? Perfect, thank you. So why choose RBC and begin with our your term solution for your client, Eric? So we have those customizable term lengths between 10 and 40 years. We could create a very individualized picture for Eric. And besides our contractual conversion features, which I'll add, we'll have that full product shelf right now for conversions. We have our par whole life. We have the UL, we have the T100. We also have this fabulous feature called the term partial conversion and carryover, which I'm very excited to get into next. Also, ADO can be maximized on what we convert for Eric down the road without any evidence of insurability, which we'll get into as well. And Eric really enjoys knowing that the long-term planning we can do for him today, we could also do for his young daughter, Maggie. So let's get going into these flexible features. Caitlin, you can change the slide for me there. Our first topic is a big differentiator for RBC insurance, and it's our partial conversion and carryover feature. This is a way your clients can benefit by converting their existing term coverage. So this option allows your client to partially convert existing term coverage to new permanent policy. We have this available for our participating whole life as well as our T100. And then they could carry over the remaining term coverage as a rider without evidence of insurability. The term rider will be issued at policy year one using current age, current rates. The term length of the rider also does not have to match that of the original policy. For example, if the original policy was a T10, it could be carried over starting brand new as a new T10, be extended to a T15, a T20, or a T25. The reverse can happen as well. If the original is a T20, but once we reset, the client only needs, let's say, 10 years of coverage, we could also shrink that at the same time. On the term 100, we have the T10 and T20 available for this option. The client will have one policy, one policy fee. Now, we didn't just launch this option for policies that went into force this year, but we've actually backdated this feature to policies issued from February 1st, 2005 and onwards. So there likely is a client base in your book right now with RBC that could really benefit from this feature. Now, before we go into Eric's situation, which we have up here, I want to go into the minimum. So all you have to do is convert the minimum uh, to each product in, able, in order to bring over that term balance. So on our RBC growth insurance, it is $25,000. On the growth plus, it is $250,000. And on T100, that is $50,000. However, in Eric's scenario, although the 
entries are quite low and quite accessible. You know, he is a professional, he has a solid cash flow, he has sizable long term insurance needs. So we've converted in this case 500,000 to our growth insurance product, and we're going to bring over the balance, that 1 million, as a term 20. So we see that he started with that term 10, and when we've carried it over and reset it to that term 20, we are not going to ask for any evidence of insurability. Now, Eric still has that 1.5 million that he needed from the get-go with this. However, he wants to see some growth. So we're gonna add some ADO to this. Caitlin, if you could please change the slide. Thank you. We have our illustration summary page here. I'll first mention that Eric can add ADO onto the converted portion of the policy, once again, with no evidence of insurability. He is not capped in any way by virtue of this being a conversion. The same amount that you would illustrate for new business on our illustration software is exactly what Eric could get as a conversion. Once again, no evidence of insurability required. Now the maximum available ADO is over 15,000, but we're looking at Eric's cash flow. We're gonna choose an even $10,000. So we're gonna see what that looks like in the next slide. Thank you. So we see that first annual deposit of $10,000 to highlight how flexible this feature is, will become Eric's personal non-evidence max that he could start, reduce, stop, reset, no evidence of insurability, no matter how much time transpires. So let's see what that looks like. So we make our first year deposit of 10,000. We can just go back one. And one of us, so slide 29 there. Perfect. Now year four, Eric might come to you and say, you know, my daughter Maggie started hockey. Things are a bit tight right now. Can we reduce that down to 6,000? That's no issue. When Eric comes back and he's ready to put in that 10,000 again, we will not ask for evidence of insurability, no matter how much time has transpired. At year 10, he might come back and say, I think I really overextended myself on our new cottage. I don't think I can make this ADO payment whatsoever. That's no issue at all. We turn it off for the time being. When Eric is ready to come back, he gets restarted up till that original first year amount, that $10,000. No evidence of insurability required. He could do so no matter what's happened to his health in the meantime. Now, this could go a very long way for those fee-for-service professional advisors who may have variable income, variable cash flow. We wanted to build in a really flexible feature there so that the policy bends and not breaks if something comes up. These solutions are meant to be in place for decades and we really can't say you know, what the future holds. So this way we're able to adapt and adjust and keep this protection in place as the years go on. Next slide, please, Caitlin. So in the interest of time, we're gonna keep it very high level today, but I wanna draw a brief attention to the summary chart at key milestone years to show Eric the impact of this plan we created. So at year 20, we had put on a term rider, it's dropped off at this point, the cost of the whole life with the ADO, now I've removed the term insurance to make it a fair comparison, is 515,120 spread out over 20 years. So without putting in a single penny past year 20, we see at age 65, the CSV is almost at that projected 872,000 and the death benefit is over 1.53 million. Now this is still meaningful as we see here in that minus one BSIR scenario. At age 85, that's now grown to a projected 2.35 million of cash value and the death benefit has grown to over $2.85 million. When considering that Eric wants to leave, uh, sorry, leave a legacy to Maggie, to Maggie, his daughter, we get to show him how with just over half a million dollars upfront over those 20 years, he can acquire 2.85 million that will go to towards that, um, his beneficiary. If he lives to 100, you never know, Eric might move to a blue zone, live that Mediterranean diet life, uh, live up to 100, that benefit has climbed to over 4.4 million. Eric loves what he sees and he would love to do the same for his daughter, Maggie. Change the slide. So Eric will set up a $100,000 policy for her. That's Maggie there. When she turns 18, it opens up the windows to 
exercise our juvenile guaranteed insurability benefit. Now, what I wanna say is that as an industry first, RBC insurance on standard rated juvenile policies, ages zero to 17, will automatically include that juvenile GIB with no extra premium whatsoever. It is included, it doesn't need to be applied for. Also, you could exercise those options for either term or permanent insurance. We did this because in those early adult years, uh, insurability needs can be high, but cash flow is low. Your average 24, 29 year old may not have the cash flow to get more permanent insurance. So we wanted to give those options. So we're gonna look into what that looks like specifically for Maggie, if you don't mind changing the slide there for my hand. Thank you. So we see the original 100,000. At age 24, Maggie exercises one of those options for term, because that's more accessible for her at this time. Same thing at 30. My closest age 40, insurable age 40 is when the JGIB falls off. At 39, she has more cash flow. She could go ahead and apply for more PAR using that JGIB. Something I wanna mention as well, those two options that she exercised for term insurance, those are standalone your term policies. They have the ability to be exchanged, to be converted, unless something happened to Maggie's health later on and she can no longer obtain new insurance. Those are standalone term policies that she could still convert and extend her coverage. So putting in that juvenile policy at such a young age is a way to effectively protect Maggie's insurability for the rest of her adult life. And that could be quite meaningful to somebody like Eric. Caitlin, if you don't mind going to the next slide. To wrap things up, at the heart of these sessions is not just a demonstration of some of our solutions, but we wanted to attract and engage your prospects and convert them into clients. So where can we find those opportunities? As Caitlin mentioned earlier, only eight to 10% of advisors speak about living benefits, or sell living benefits. So opening that door of that conversation could be a major differentiator to your professional prospects who may not have been approached in that way before. Uh, your current block of business with RBC is a great place to mine opportunities for the life solutions. Now that we've carried back that term partial conversion and carryover uh, to February 1st, 2005, many of your existing clients can benefit from this. And when it comes to juvenile policies, you may have clients that feel they are set in their own plan but they've never been approached before about their children or about their grandchildren. So that could be a very meaningful door opener. So Caitlin and I would love to go over some of these just short ideas that we were able to list today, talk about new ones and help you turn those prospect opportunities into client relationships. The next slide. And on that, because we'd love to speak with you, we do have our team's contact information up. On the life team, there's myself and Christopher Belanger who cover areas of Ontario, would love to help on the life side. And the next slide, Caitlin, is Caitlin and Peter's information. If you're joining us from outside Ontario, please reach out anyways. We would love to connect you with the team expert that could help. Um, and with that, thank you to everybody for joining us today. Thank you for your patience while we struggled a little bit on the tech side. I'm sure we've all been there before, but thank you. Thank you so much. And we look forward to working with and supporting all of you in the future. Thanks, Anna. And just before we move on, uh, Caitlin, on behalf of all of us at IDC and our advisors, um, great to see you back. And we look forward to working with you for the years to come. And uh, thanks again for sharing uh, with us today. Anna, great job on the, on the uh, participating whole life product. And uh, something that's, I think, just around the corner with RBC is they are looking to finalize the deal with uh, life design analysis to help move some of the, that term block into conversion, into the conversion process and take advantage of your new wealth product that came out last year. So anyway, thank you again, Anna and uh, Kaylin. And... Uh...